Fishing your home water means the ultimate in local knowledge. For Don and I, this means the Columbia River as it free flows through our hometown of Trail in British Columbia. Here you can fish dry fly from mid-April through mid-October and almost any night there's a significant hatch of caddis. Having a boat is almost a necessity on this big water as it flows at an average of 100 cubic feet per second and the most productive spots are accessed from a boat. Big rainbows feeding on small caddis. That's today as Streamlines proudly presents Sport Fishing on the Fly. <laughs> Fishing on the fly are Don Fresky and Grant Fines. Sport Fishing on the Fly is brought to you by Ford Division and the Ford Explorer. Oh yeah, oh look at the nice colors. Oh, <laughs> nice. Wow. There's a classic Columbia River rainbow. Oh, the, oh, there it goes. Oh man. Jumped again. So that's it's the emerger you put on. Emerger, yeah, emerging caddis. And I was fishing down in these little guys down here. And I saw a nice boil out in the current, so I cast it right into him. Let it go into the water a bit and, and he picked it up. And he's got a big red stripe on him. Boy, and he's holding tight. It's really tough in this Columbia because of the, the current. Oh, Especially when you get a fish this size. 20 plus? Yeah, he's a, he's a nice fish. Oh. Slide to the back and yeah. hand picking him up. Whoa. If he's almost ready, that is. There he is. All right, nice looking fish. That Let's is. Come up here. There he is. Beautiful. Oh, beauty. <laughs> That's Excellent. Nice fish. Is it ever? Boy, oh boy. I don't know how big he is, just right in the lip. I'll hold him up here. Yeah. He's been spawning. Look at the nice colors. Oh, nice and long. Great That's fish. a native too. Look, yeah. at all these, look at his back fin. He's been just probably finished spawning. I'll come in here to feed a bit. I'll let him revive. Oh, that water's cold. Yikes. And this is July. It's amazing how cold the water still is. Oh, it is. It's crazy. Boy, oh boy. Oh, there he goes. Right on. Didn't waste any time. All right. The classic way to fish this emerging caddis. It's not typical dry fly action. Easy stuff. It's easy. You see the fish rising just off the edge of the current. The flow behind us here, and that's where the last one just picked up was. You're just inside the current. So you got to cast out across the current. Yep. Let your fly swing past, just past where the fish is feeding, and then you slowly strip it in. But your fly is actually skidding across the water. It as does. It's going. Initially, it skids across, and then the, the little head on it pulls it under, just an inch under. And that's if you got the good like polarized it. glasses, you, you actually can see just it see sitting it. under there. Yep. And then you, you either strip it in to bring it back to where the fish is, yep. or you just let it sit there. Either exactly. And, they, and the fish really like that. You know, their fish don't like to come up very much right as they don't Predators like to break the around, surface right. yeah so they sit under there and they just pick it up as it comes by and it's a lot easier than like later on you get the good dry fly because yeah. the fish actually do come up it starts to get darker but yeah. then you have to have the pinpoint casting and no drift and no, no drift no and all that no and drag the on current, the fly. try and get a no drift yeah, in this current tough. so this fishing the emerging caddis is a good way to fish productive yeah. i think easy. it's the most effective way to fish the columbia river right when the caddis are on especially if you have a good pattern Oh, we got a killer pattern, and we're going to show people that later. Yeah. I think we'll give That's the secret title. away. Yeah. All right. <laughs> recommended setup. Everybody wants to know what's the, the best setup that you can have when you go to fish a, a particular venue. There's really three things you got to worry about. The flies you're going to use, how far you got to cast, yep. and the size of the fish. Right? 
Here yeah. in the Columbia, for instance, like we're fishing with size 16 and 14 caddis, so you can really yeah. get away with a really light rod if you wanted to. <laughs> But <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> There's a lot of really big fish there out here, are. right? I mean, like yes. five and yeah. six pound fish. Yeah. So you need at least the four weight rod as a very minimum, probably oh. more like a five or six weight rod. Yeah, I think so. To hold on to the fish, you definitely. Because look at the current. I mean, there's big fish and a big current. It blew a three, four weight rod. Like you've got a 10 foot four weight. Yeah. And you're to the max. I am to the yeah. max on it. And they're also, I mean, you can see the current swings in and out a lot here. So you have to cast a little farther sometimes. So having a little longer rod too. So an ideal setup here is a little longer rod, like nine, nine and a half, half ten, 10 foot. foot. Yep. Have a little heavier rod, like a five or six weight. Yep. And, and then the line you want to use, you want to load it up too, right? You got to, yeah, rocket taper weight forwards are the key in here. Double taper lines, you get the winds, tends to flail a bit. You got you want to get it out there with a weight forward rocket. So if you've got a five weight rod, you want to put on like a six weight six weight, weight forward with yep. a rocket taper. Yep. And that way, you can, if you have to get that 80 footer out there, <laughs> you might. And you do. And if you're not Fall fishing from here. the boat, you need it. Yep. For sure. We're fortunate because we have the boat. All right. Well, you saw him. Uh, yeah, gave himself away, fished to him. Oh, yeah, he looks like a nice one. Uh, not bad. I don't know if he's, uh, I think the bigger guys haven't quite come up yet. Uh, still pretty Seems early. A little later on for yeah. the bigger guys to come up. He's sitting holding the current here. Not bad. Oh, he's a nice one. Yep. Nice rainbow. Oh, where's that anchor? <laughs> oh, the slide. slide. Back. Yep. Slide positions. So that was that little emerging caddis. Yep. Emerging caddis and uh, he gave himself away. So we, the standard emerging caddis thing cast out in front of him and let it drift into him. It wasn't sitting up dry. No. Nope. Just barely under the surface. That's our little emerging caddis. Oh, and it works so it's well. It's a deadly little pattern. Yeah. And you know, the fish, like you say, they really haven't come on yet. Nope. It's early, it's uh, wind's blowing. I mean, it's, it's just starting to clear up again after the rains. Yeah. But these big slabs come up here. Oh, look at him. He's just a... Oh, oh no, not yet. Right, one oh, more right time. in the lip. Better over here. Oh, oh yeah. look at that. Look fish. at how fat oh. he is. Oh, man, oh, man. <laughs> What a that's fat. a that's a five pound fish. It is, yeah. Oh yeah, just because he's so fat. I'll let you get your fly out. Yeah, yeah look at how fat. That's oh. oh, that's at least a five pound fish. Look the little head. The small head. Just the little head. Guy. Oh yeah. Oh man. And you said he's not bad. <laughs> Slide the way. Oh goes. look at that fish, eh? Oh, oh look at that! It just bombed oh, a little head and just a fat body. What a whale! Well, I'll slide up here so you can let him go. Oh man. Look at this, this thing's bigger than my hand across the back. <laughs> there he goes. Oh, he just took off. Just gone. Oh, excellent. Good. Yeah, that was pretty big. <laughs> it was. You just, you never know. You, you got so much power on those babies. You just bend them over. Oh, he's not bad enough. <laughs> fish is dancing in the sky. Oh, that's Columbia River. That's classic Columbia it River is. stuff. So he whacked it. How does this one feel? I hate to say, you know, this one feels, <laughs> this one feels better than the last one. The last oh, one was, what, five that, pounds maybe? Oh, yeah. He was a pig. Oh, you're coming. I haven't seen him. He just oh, he's a nice one. Oh, yes. He's a beauty. Oh, yeah. oh and he's fresh, too. Yeah. Oh, oh look at this Look one. at that. Oh. He's, he's going to go. go here. He's going to go here. Let me get up here. There he goes. Oh, there he goes. Oh. <laughs> I got this prank. Look at him coming up just down here, oh, just yeah. off the edge They're of the floor. They're starting again. You just had that sitting out there. I did. Yeah. And that's the way you got to fish it. I mean, a merger, as long as it's out in the flow with the feeding lines where they are, you're going to get fish. <laughs> and if you can get fish like this. Yeah, and it's a, it's just a killer pattern. Just a great pattern. This is a, oh, this is, oh, a, this yeah. is a Columbia River rainbow. <laughs> wow. I thought the last one was big. No way, this is a nice fish. <laughs> Look at the Look at him, he's just, oh, man. We were talking about the, the ideal recommended setup. Yeah. I think I'm a little light right now on the recommended setup. Yeah. And these natives are they're they're great because he, they just run and take you out. Let's see how red he is. Oh. He's just finished. He's probably oh. been up spawning. They spawn right up to the middle of June in here, yep. up in the creeks, and it looks like he's been down feeding for about a couple weeks. So they're coming on, they're getting real fresh again and but oh. that hatchery, you can tell the difference. Oh yeah. yeah I mean you look at this oh. one this and you look at head. the hatchery, <laughs> this has got a big head on it, big tail fin, built yeah. for power, thinner. But just streamlined, eh? they're just awesome fish, the natural rainbow in here. They're a steelhead stream in the Columbia River. They are. And they're they're deadly. You know what another secret is that we think is a secret in fishing this? Is having, the, we've got a regular yeah. uh, 
leader on here, a nine foot. This is actually a 4X leader on there, and then a little piece of fluorocarbon. Yeah, that fluorocarbon, especially when you're fishing emerging, gets it under that little bit and it's clear. And it's clear. And the, the big guys don't see it. Really helps. Oh, yeah, you got a big native. That's a nice fish. Oh, oh he's a beauty. And you can always tell the natives and the naturals. Just look at the head. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, it's just like night and day. Yeah. Oh, well, I think oh, he's yeah. ready. Yeah. Then I can get him up here. Oh. Oh, oh man. Look at look that look rainbow. At that <laughs> Is that a look at that? That's that's pushing six pounds. Oh yeah, we got oh, it. How long is that? Oh, that's 24, 25. Could even be bigger. They really got the wicked teeth. Oh, oh yeah. Oh look at that. Oh, look fish. at that piece of meat. That's a steelhead. That's a steelhead size. That's that's that? pushing seven pounds. That fish. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> what a that is the Columbia River. Oh, man. Columbia. Look at the big head, the big fins. That's a beautiful oh, native. Is it ever? Look at the colors on it. You just can't beat that. Oh. And he's probably just gonna bolt too. Well, we'll see here. Oh. Yeah, just revive him good. Yeah. Well, it was good having the boat because you got a good place to do it right yeah, behind the boat sure. here. Well, I have to say that's that's definitely my biggest fish out of the Columbia River. Oh, one of them for sure. Well, it's the biggest I've caught, I think. Oh yeah, probably one bigger one of the bigger ones we've landed, but. I've had some on that have actually gone crazy and just broke me off like nothing. No, you can't catch them much bigger on no, the fly rod. No way. Here. They're just too powerful. Isn't that unreal? That is amazing. What a night of fishing. That was on a size 16 caddis, yep. emerging caddis. And people that don't think the fly is everything. Oh, it is. If you can spend three dollars on a little fly and you're going to catch fish like that, to me it's like that flies worth $20. Yeah, put, it, it, on really a, is, put it on a twig <laughs> on a piece of line and you're going to catch fish. Yeah. You know, this river is all about line control. <laughs> Big cast. <laughs> Actually, it's about good flies and your little merging caddis is probably the best pattern for this river. I think it's time we went to the bench and you get everybody how to tie it up. I agree. It's a great little pattern. I think everybody should, should know the good flies because yeah. then everybody has fun. No fishing. secrets. No secrets, no. Everybody has their secrets. One condition, and that is if you find a way to fish it or you have good success on a river other than the Columbia River, let us know. We're yeah. interested to find out how everybody does with the emerging cabin. Yeah, and fish it wet, fish it dry, try different things. We're going to go to the bench when we come back. It's going to be a new day here in the Columbia River because we're just about out of light for yeah. filming today. What a great day of fishing. <laughs> Big fish on the emerging. You can't ask for anything more. Big wow. fish is right. Yeah. I can't believe the size of them and how colorful they are. They're just a wow. the classic rainbow. A lot we, saw of every, we saw the contrast too. We saw the hatchery, we yep. saw the natives. It was great. Yep. Really good. Excellent fishery and uh, try out this little excellent fly. You bet. Hi, and welcome to On the Bench. Today I've got one of my favorite little patterns, the emerging caddis. You know, the emerging caddis has transformed over the years and been modified into a fly that we're really comfortable with now, and it's very effective. So make sure you have this list of ingredients before you start. Medium olive or orange antron or zelon for the trailing shuck. We're going to use some black Ventex yarn for the body, some medium olive antron for the wing case, and some light elk hair for the wing. I'm going to tie the fly on a size 16 TMC, TMCO 2487 hook and I'm going to use some ADOT black thread. To start the fly off we're going to take a small little piece of medium olive antron, tie it into the back of the hook and leave a nice trailing shuck out the back, probably about an inch long. We're going to fold back the extra antron we have at the top and use that for the wing case later. I've now taken some fine Fentex yarn and we're going to tie this in and then slowly wrap it forward to form the body. And we want to keep the body as thin as possible, so really thin light wraps as you work your way up to the eye of the hook. Take the leftover shuck material that you've had sitting at the back of the hook and slowly pull it forward to form a wing case over the black body you've just put on and tie off near the head. The wing is now formed by taking about 10 to 15 strands of fine elk hair and tying it over top. 
You can also use some really thick elk hair or even take 20 to 30 strands of elk hair if you want to fish this fly dry. But I like to fish it wet so I keep my elk hair nice and sparse for the wing. We're ready now for the finishing touches on the fly. I'm going to take some scissors and cut a nice fine head of my elk hair on the front of the fly just so it forms a nice little head with the elk hair. And I'm going to go back to my trailing shuck and just really pick that off hard to form about an inch of a trailing shuck off the back. And you want to pick it off to give it that nice, loose, fluffy look. Ha, <laughs> what a great little fly. The Emerging Caddis, I've used it and modified it in my home waters to my specific colors and it works really good around this area. So I think what you should do is also try to modify it and change the colors of it to your area so it matches up and so you can fish it the way you like. Give it a try, it's a great little fly, it's going to work well for you. Today on the technology, I want to follow up a little bit more on what Don and I were talking about earlier on rod setup, especially if you're in the market for a new rod, got a couple of hints for you. You know, there's some great rod manufacturers out there and there's a lot of them. Probably the best way for you to get an idea of what rod is best for you is to get some hands-on knowledge of it, get a chance to cast a rod. Probably the best way is to go to a fly shop, your local fly shop because most of them will allow you to try a rod out. If they won't let you take it to a river, you can at least maybe get out into a backyard or something and give it a try. Or perhaps you have a friend that's got a fly rod, because first-hand knowledge is really insurmountable when it comes to selecting a fly rod. A lot of fly rods are soft, some are stiff. Again, it comes down to personal preference. Before you buy a rod, there's something you should consider from the rod manufacturer, because a lot of rod manufacturers will replace unconditionally a broken rod. No matter how you break it, you step on it, closing the car door, doesn't matter how it breaks, unconditionally they'll replace it. You might have to pay for the shipping. But there is a tendency now from some rod manufacturers to charge you for that rod blank. So you might have to pay a little bit of money, something to check out before you buy the rod because they are pretty fragile, they break fairly easily. Now we've been fortunate this year to have Scott Fly Rod Company give us some rods to use and they're an exceptional rod, really good, we've enjoyed using them. And one neat thing about their fly rods is if you happen to break a rod tip, they have the unconditional guarantee you send it in, they'll send you the rod tip back. But what's neat about them is the way they match up their graphite blanks. When they're doing their original manufacturing, they come up with tolerances for each individual series of rod that they have. Now knowing that a four weight rod is not just a four weight rod to them because within that four weight series there are lots of different layers of four weight rods. So when you get your rod tip back, you're going to be casting almost the identical rod that you had before you broke it. Now I know there's people who have broken rods, friends of mine, who've gotten the rod back and said, geez, it's got a real different feel to it. Well, Scott's got this way of selecting the tolerances so that you're going to get the same rod back. Kind of a neat selling feature and other companies have their own selling features too, but that's a unique one to Scott Fly Rods. Two more considerations when you're buying a rod. One is on how long of a rod should I get. If you're like us at the Columbia River here and you have to make some big casts, or if you do a lot of your fishing out of a float tube, you want to get a longer rod, get like a nine and a half or a ten foot rod. If however you're doing creek fishing, well you can get away with going to a smaller rod. And the last consideration is what kind of weight should the rod be? And that depends on two things. One is the flies that you're going to be throwing. If you're throwing a lot of bass flies or bigger flies, you want to get a heavier rod, like five, six, or seven weight rod. Going to the smaller flies, you can get away with some of the one and two weight rods. But a real consideration is the size of the fish you're going after. Because if you've got a one or two weight rod, you don't want to be going after 20 to 22 inch fish. Because if you can land the fish, you've probably had to play it out too much. And the chances of that fish's survival if you release it aren't very good. And I know there's been a real fad to go to the ultra lightweight stuff. We have an ultra lightweight show coming up in a couple of weeks time. But you really have to be considerate of the fish on the size of the, the rod that you're using versus the size of the fish that you're going to catch couple of techniques now let's get back to some more Columbia River rainbow well we've come back in the fall to the Columbia River because we wanted to finish up our show on the emerging caddis we caught some great fish in the springtime but you know in the spring you get about an hour or in the summer too you get about an hour every day that's productive and 
on fly fishing. And it's late at night, you can't <laughs> see. It's dark, yeah. yeah. Exactly. But this time of year it's great. We've got fish already coming up. It's the middle of the day and that's the best part about fishing the Columbia in the yes. fall. Yes, and you know one thing I noticed coming out here on the boat now is how clean the water is. Weed grow, oh, yeah. how much this, this river system is cleaned up. Well, a couple of the mills have cut back on the amount of dioxins and furons and etc. Et that's been exactly. going into the river and it has. It's made a big difference. It's awesome. And so now we're getting mayfly hatches, which we never had before. We're getting the nice caddis hatch in the evening. Hoppers are abundant. We're getting everything. It's really neat to see. Oh. Jeez. Oh, oh here you go. Did he hammer that or what? Oh, eh? kaboom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, it's just, the sun's just gone down and and we've been seeing them rise. Oh, this is ideal. And yeah. that guy hammered it. Well, you, you know, you, once you fish a place long enough, you start to read the seams where the fish are going to be and you actually start to see them come up there. That's exactly what happened. I knew there was going to be fish right in there. And there was. There's a classic little Columbia River Ramo. Oh, and there he goes, just like that. Oh, he just cut off. Oh, that's a good release. Like that he was gone, the perfect release. Didn't have to touch him. Oh, oh, oh hey, that's hey, look at that flip. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> Great fish. Nice fish. They're on the emerge room. Boy, these, this one's a nice one. See how fat he is? Holy cow. Whoa, he's not too happy about it either. Lean over here and see if I can scorp Oh. Got there him. He is. Oh, look at how fat he is. There you go. Holy cow. What a beauty. Is that a nice fish or what? <laughs> look at the I shoulders. Mean, look at the small guy. head. Yeah, look at the small head in the back on him. The back is just, they're thick. That fish has got to weigh at least four pounds. Just let him revive here a minute. Had a good little fight. And when he decides to go, he'll go. Oh, <laughs> nice aerial! Oh, these are great fish here. Are you know, we've ever? been waiting since June. Because that's when we did the first half of the show. We've been waiting since then to come back out for this action to start happening oh, again. Oh, no, and he got off. Oh, and Don's got off. Right there. Did you get a look at him? Yeah, it was a nice one. It was the nice same as the first oh, one. Oh, good man, fish. Oh, man. But this is what the Columbia's about. Not very often you hook up a double header, though. Like, if you can catch a couple fish a night, you had a good night on the Columbia. And we're not talking a, a lengthy fish here, but we are talking a very fat, healthy fish. Oh. Feel a weight on this thing. Look at, <laughs> look at how fat he is. <laughs> this guy is obese. And they're solid too, they're just like rocks. Like, that's 16 inches. Yeah, isn't that a beautiful fish? <laughs> wow. Ha, not bad. <laughs> what a great two days of fishing. You know, we started this in the spring, we finished it in the fall, and yeah. oh, it's just excellent here in the Columbia River. You know, it's my favorite place to fish. I've gone, we've gone a lot of places, and yeah. by far this is my favorite place. Well, to fish. and that is the one unfortunate thing of doing a show. Good, we get to go a lot of different places. Yeah. Bad, we don't get to fish the Columbia as much no, as we like to. Not as much as we like, but hey, you know, it's still great whenever we come out, we have a good time, especially fishing the emerging caddis killer great pattern equalizer. and it is a great equalizer on this river and you should have a boat when you come on yeah you need a boat you need to have the flies that dawn ties up yeah. and then you come out here and you catch fish like we did yeah that's we'll excellent a blast yeah. Oh, yeah when you do though come out take care and conserve our waters again you get a great fishery like this one you Fantastic. get a very special fishery here oh, see you next time on sport fishing on the fly or as my italian friends in trail would say pescare con la mosca whatever <laughs> Look at the, oh, he's a big one. He's a beauty. <laughs> That's what we came back oh, for. Oh, did we ever, holy cow. He skied up, this guy's in the five to six range for sure, oh no. Right in the, look at where he's hooked. Just on the side of the lip. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> almost ready to go. Not quite. Oh, there he goes. <laughs>